France has a large amount of nuclear reactors. France is dependent on nuclear power in a way that other European countries just aren't. France was getting its nuclear power, its nuclear fuel, its uranium. It was getting it from Niger. It was getting it from Niger. They had a plant there and they had a, they had a prime minister there. This guy was, from, was, was helpful to the West. <clears throat> he was cooed by his palace guard. A captain. I can't remember his name. But it's, it's really not important. What, what's important is what happened after. Or what happened right before. Because I believe, I believe that those riots, those riots in France, that was, a, that was an operation done against France. As a warning for them not to interfere in Niger. I believe that's what's going to happen in the United States later on. As a warning for us not to interfere with What's going on in Israel? What's going to soon be going on in Israel? All right. You have France. France had was getting its nuclear power from Niger. Niger had a coup. You had a riot in France. Now, you also have Macron saying that NATO should put boots on the ground in Ukraine. And then everybody told France they were crazy. Like, no, we're not going to put new boots on the ground in Niger. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. So you have France going over. They began arming Armenia. Armenia leaves the CSTO. That's uh, Russia's version of NATO. Because quite frankly, Russia can't intervene right now in between them and Azerbaijan. Now, this is all a conspiracy theory. Not really. I mean, it's more or less just paying attention to what exactly happened if you watch the news like I did. Yeah, France loses its nuclear fuel source. They then have to basically go to the only other large supplier to get their nuclear fuel, which is Kazakhstan. Now, I had a conversation with an employee from Energy Fuels USA. That is ticker symbol UUUU. Energy fuels, you, you, you. They're building two more uranium mines in the United States currently. And he told me in no certain unter- no ter- no uncertain terms that Russia through Kazakhstan controls the uranium market. Now, you also had before the war in Ukraine, right before, you had a riot in Belarus and you had a riot in Kazakhstan. And Russia sent troops each time. That's because Russia was shoring up its backyard, I believe. I believe these riots were caused by Russia. You know, caused by Russian Russian agents. You know, let, let's look back to the riot as a tool of statecraft, as a tool of espionage. You had... I believe Freddie and Teddy Roosevelt's nephew. I can't remember the exact what his exact role was. I know he was related to Teddy Roosevelt, former president. He overthrew Iran the Iranian regime after they replaced Mosaddegh. Not exactly sure, but when they replaced this guy named Mosaddegh. They replaced him with, he, he 
Teddy Roosevelt's nephew is the one who said he used $50,000. $50,000. He just paid gangsters in that country. And they caused regime change. 50 grand. It's 50 grand in a suitcase. It's the right people to cause a riot. Now, how does this... So, that that's the basis of what I'm saying is, is a historical fact. Now, the, the exact details of it, I'm fuzzing on. I can Google them later. Take that. You got that right there, that piece of information. There's a riot in Iran caused by 50 grand in a suitcase. Take that to France. France is full of people, quite frankly, they don't like France. They're not, they don't feel like French citizens. How much does it take on the news of some kid getting shot by the cops for them to riot? How does this all tie to Niger? If you look at the timing of it, the timing of the riots in France, the timing of the coup, the fact that Russia then sent troops to Burkina Faso, another French country, former French colony. They speak French in Burkina Faso. They sent Wagner Group. They sent mercenaries over there to protect him. 300, that's uh, Captain Ibrahim Charour. He, he he also overthrew something like that. He do, did a coup. I, I don't know the specifics, but I know that Russia sent troops to protect him. They also, I believe they also sent troops to Niger. Now, these are all commodity wars, what's going on. If you can put pressure on France, who has nuclear power, and disrupt their supply of uranium, and now make them have to go to Kazakhstan, and then you see France, Macron, he say, Hey, we should put group boots on the ground in NATO. And then you have a couple a while back ago, you had a hotel get blown up. Apparently there were French mercenaries there, foreign legion guys. Then you have France helping Armenia with anti-aircraft systems, anti-aircraft missile systems, to because Armenia got trounced by our Azerbaijan. They had no defense against the Turkish-made drones, you know, made by Bayraktar, which if I can invest in Bayraktar, I would. I mean, they're, they're great. They're a innovative company, Bayraktar. We've got the Bayraktar, I can't remember the name of their original drone, but they also had the Akinshi, and now they have the Kiss Lima, which is a... Uh, autonomous fighter jet drone fighter jet I don't know if it's autonomous but it could be yeah so you have France let, let me let me condense the timeline France has been tiptoeing into Ukraine because the only person more threatened by an ascendant Russia is France. They don't necessarily want to be under Russian power. But now they are. They, they have to get their uranium from Kazakhstan. And I have a photo of when Macron went to France to get his, his uranium. It's posted on my page. Um, so you have these riots going on. I believe these riots are caused by the Russians. The Russians, the Niger agents that are there, the whole consortium Iranian agents that are there. These people cause massive riots in France. This caused France to not attack Niger and get its uranium because they know they'll have riots. These riots were just a taste. It's too many people for them to round up. 
Yeah, they can they can look for the individual agents, the ones that are going around paying these criminals. Because that's what they are, criminals. Paying these criminals, bringing them the suitcases of cash and saying, hey, go riot. Go riot, go riot right now. We need you guys to riot right now. You can only round up the ringleaders. You can't round up everybody. It's too many people to arrest. They could, I mean, you know, French, the French rounded up. The French, they got a pretty brutal police system by all accounts. But for whatever reason, France blinked, had to go to Kazakhstan. You didn't have France arming Armenia, saying they need to put boots on the ground in Ukraine, saying NATO needs to put boots on the ground in Ukraine. That's because France got winged. They got, they got zapped by Russia. Now, what does this all have to do with the war in Ukraine? Because, because Russia is the first mover here. Because Russia was the first mover. They were the first ones to go into Ukraine. They went in 10 years ago, strong. They're little green men. I, I remember I watched it on Vice. I watched it on Vice. I remember it. Russian Roulette. That was the name of the, the, the docuseries. I think the guy's name was Simon Trotsky or something like that. I don't remember. But he, he had like a, you know, that was back when Vice was cool. <laughs> Vice used to be, Vice used to be the, be the thing to watch. Not so much anymore. It's really nothing replaced it. I mean, it's really sad that such a innovative journalism platform went away. Or maybe they're not. Maybe they're, maybe they'll hire me. I don't freaking know. You know maybe they'll, they'll revamp. Maybe one of these days. But you know, I know the guy Shane. He ran off into the sunset with a couple billion dollars, and he doesn't care anymore. <laughs> he hasn't seen him on camera in quite a while. So, not that I have. I haven't seen. Him. Maybe he's been on camera. I don't know. Not all seeing eye over here. But uh, I believe when you look at these these things, these things that's happened, you're seeing something like 1984, a state of perpetual war going on. You're seeing a state of perpetual nonstop war over commodities. It's being perpetrated. Right under our noses. The common man, really, if they don't pay attention to why, if they don't know why Niger, the Niger coup, could be connected to the riots. Because they don't know that France has many nuclear reactors. They don't see the importance. The, the idea that the riots could somehow be connected to the coup that's going on in Niger. It escapes their grasp. It escapes their mind. They have no idea. Because they don't know about nuclear fuel. They don't know about supply chains. They don't know about minerals. They don't know about critical minerals. They don't know about anything. All they know about is, you know, Call of Duty, going to the club, getting twerked on, or whatever they're doing. I'm paying attention. I'm keeping score over here. And all of this ties back to what happened in Niger, what in the riots. The riots, I believe, preceded the coup in Niger. There's a drone base in Niger, too, a large drone base that's fighting terrorists. And also that term terrorist. It's a totally made up term. You know, I was talking to a Palestinian guy the other night, and he was making a point that, you know, the Viet Cong kind of did the same thing that Hamas did. Just, you know, just, just, but we didn't call the Viet Cong terrorists, we called them freedom fighters. Not justifying January 7th, January 6th, I mean, um, not January 6th, October 7th. Not justifying October 7th. I, I think it was abhorrent. I think what's happening to Hamas right now is, well, just desserts. They earned it. 
you know, I'm pro-Israel all the way. But I, I saw his point. I saw what he was getting at when he was saying, hey, this is asymmetrical warfare. I get it. I understand what he's saying. I understand. I understand his, his logic, the pro-Palestinian guy. He said he wasn't pro-Palestinian, but he was. <laughs> I saw his logic. I saw what he was talking about. Take all these things in a nutshell. Blend them up. Look, you had the riots in France. Then you had a coup in Niger. Then the Russians sent troops to two countries in what is it, West Africa? West Africa. The Sahel region. You have Ibrahim Chahor. He goes to Moscow. He meets with Putin. He says, when Russia, Russia delivers. You know, which is more than the West can say. It's the West, we haven't delivered. You put all this in a nutshell and you look at everything that happened. It spells disaster for the West. You've got allies losing the thing that keeps their light sword. Think about how important it is to keep the light sword for your citizens. And this guy lost it. <laughs> and now he has to go to the enemy. The enemy, by the way, who had a riot also right before the war in Ukraine. And Russia sent troops there. Russia sending troops there as a garrison. Hey, hey, listen, Tokyev. I think that's the leader of Kazakhstan. You better behave. You better walk the line. Because what regime changed you? They did it in Belarus. Armenia gets into a war over the Norgonal Karabakh region, stepping cart area. And they lose. Um, as um, Azerbaijan also kills a couple of Russian peacekeepers, peacekeepers, and this leaves Armenia to now be courting the West. They're getting weapons from Greece. They're getting weapons from India. And meanwhile, over there in the Azerbaijani region, you've got a full-on arms race going. Azerbaijan is buying fighter jets. Azerbaijan is buying more drones. The main ones I've kept up with is the fact that Armenia has been buying air defense systems, has been buying radar systems, has been buying things like that. I don't think in an arms race, Armenia can catch up with Azerbaijan, seeing that Azerbaijan Spend a billion, and there's no telling how much Armenia spent. I think Armenia is the next Ukraine. I mean, the West right now is shaky. You know, supply chains are shaky. Things are shaky. The political situation is unstable. You know, they're talking about having another government shutdown. You know, so, and then at the same time, what's quietly been going on is Serbia has been arming. Serbia has been arming itself. I see Serbia has been getting drone 